2017 uh, through their candidates, where their candidates were uh, from the left side of the party, far left side of the party, and they lost all four of those races. They they have a series of people who are still in these races right now who got in a year ago. And then you see the newest entrance, or at least what we'll call a winner, a winner in, in, in Pennsylvania. And the DCCC supported a guy who's completely pro-life and had an AR-15 in his, in his literature. The Democrat Party was completely behind that. Well, that happened to be the winning candidate. Very interesting. You see that there was an Arizona race where it was not as demonstrable between the two of them. Also, yeah. the Republican won that. Uh, I think that, that the Democratic Party is setting themselves up to run a, a hardcore race that would say we want to move the country left. We want to move the country left with free college, free health care. Uh, we want uh, gun control. Uh, we want the, the, the factors related to uh, uh, economics. They want to raise taxes. They had wanted to raise taxes a trillion dollars uh, a, a full year ago before this, and they want to raise spending a trillion dollars. So I think you have to then look at that the party, the Democratic Party, and certainly the people running against me this time were those Democrat activists – who got in the race when they were after a different kind of candidate uh, over a year ago. They are Democrat activists. They have worked their way up through campaigns. They are very much into the Democrat apparatus, whether it be Hillary, whether it be uh, you know other, other people, maybe uh, Bernie Sanders, maybe Elizabeth Warren. They are from that wing of the party. That is where the wing of the party is in Dallas County that wants to support that. So it, we're going to have – we'll be playing that Republican, conservative Republican versus liberal Democrat. And I think it will come down to this. I think it will come down to a question about who do you want to make decisions in your life? And if you're for government and you want to empower government with a trillion dollars more taxes and a trillion dollars more spending – and you want them to, as, as both uh, my colleague, both of my uh, the people run against me have said, they want single payer system, they want Medicare for all. That is the government fundamentally making a decision about your health care because that's what Obamacare is, and they would do the same with single payer. The government makes the decisions, and I'm married, my wife is not in favor of me making her health care decisions. (laughs) She does. Yeah. And so why in the world would any woman want the government rather than themselves making these decisions? I think that's going to be a big part of the election. Deconstructing Dallas, Ryan Trimble, Sean Williams. We're going to take a quick break. On the other side, we're going to be back with Congressman Pete Sessions. Maybe we'll talk a little cybersecurity. What do you think, Chairman? Sound I'm, good? I'm ready. All right. We'll see you after the break. Thanks for tuning in. It's been about a month since I started using my Buck Brush, which is a quality electric toothbrush. And let me tell you, it is the same quality as a $150 toothbrush. But Buck Brush, it's only $35. And Buck Brush doesn't rip you off by charging you $15 for every replacement head either. For only a dollar a month, you'll be brushing fresh all year. My favorite feature is the 30-second timer that vibrates to let me know exactly how long I've been brushing. It's a powerful brush with three different speeds. Stop spending hundreds hundreds of dollars on your electric toothbrush go to buckbrushco.com and try it for yourself that's buckbrushco.com join the revolution let's vibe together welcome back 
back, Deconstructing Dallas. Ryan Trimble, Sean Williams. We're joined today by Congressman Pete Sessions. And, Congressman, thanks again for coming on. You have been good to us, and you have hosted the Microsoft Cybersecurity Roundtable that we have hosted for several years here in the DFW area. And I wanted to get your thoughts on what's going on in the cybersecurity world right now. I had a chance to go up to Redmond last year and, and hear from some of the Microsoft cybersecurity experts. And I wanted to throw away all my computers, all my electronics, and just you know go, go, live, in a, go live in a cave or something. But tell us what's going on. Tell us we're safe. Tell us what we're doing proactively. Just fill us in. Well, first let me suggest ponies don't do well <laughs> in a cave. That's right. I uh, can't run very fast. Can't can't get things done. So USMU guys need to stick to uh, studying where we're headed. The bottom line is is that more and more and more technology is taking not just nation states, but individuals to where they can gather these not only signals, air signals, uh, but they can gather data through the air and and off off the uh, web sites and and into the uh, into the inter what I would call the internet of things. There's a lot of theft of data. There's a lot of stealing of data. There's a lot of breaking into accounts. The bottom line to the entire matter is, is that every company, in order to keep its privacy of its customers, companies in order to keep their their data about themselves, uh, and about the company secrets are increasingly finding themselves being isolated into private networks that nobody can then get into. Federal government is no, no, n- not any different, no different. And the federal government has a need to know that they have thousands of customers that need data and add to and supplement data. Uh, it's it's an issue. We're seeing this pop up. Uh, in particular, as we deal with nation states also, we know, and you, you have seen very clearly, how there are nation states. Uh, the Iranians have been involved, the Chinese are involved, the Russians are involved, the Chechnyans are involved. We saw North Korea uh, disagree with something that happened with them from Sony, and they came directly at them and attacked uh, their sites. Uh, Loss of data and information is critical, uh, but also so is intellectual property. And we're seeing in the same vein uh, recreation of phones, uh, of computers that are fake, that are not real. We, we remember, I'm sure every one of us has seen these fake Rolex watches that you can get for 10 bucks in New York City. Well, now it's it's embedded in, in all sorts of uh, uh, spyware and other things that companies got. So, my, my, where where are we headed here? People need to be careful. We need to be careful about what we're giving out, uh, who's involved, uh, and what we're transmitting, because increasingly yeah. it's a difficult world, and our children are having to learn this. Our our business partners are having to learn this, and. The United States has found itself on the backside of theft, of intellectual property, of data, uh, and perhaps more importantly, in this process, we're finding that our military is struggling to stay leading edge ahead of all these from a from an intelligence and military perspective also. And what do we do because... <clears throat> It's a balance. We want to be on the front end of the technology changes. You know, every six months, there are new apps, there are new social media tools, but yet, you know, there are threats that come with that. So what is the balance that the federal government, how can the federal government help us with these threats? Well, the federal government uh, finds itself in a unique position also where many times they do not employ some of the things that they do. As you may remember, there is a, a very famous instance of uh, what America did to the Iranians, a worm, a bug, uh, a, a parasite that might have been inflicted on the Iranians. Uh, and there's a movie about that and a lot of things. Lots of these things America cannot employ because they see it matured by somebody else and it comes and roosts back home. 
What people need to be aware of is the normal things. You need to change your passcodes. You need to not leave your computer handy. You need to back up appropriately what you do and and succinctly and carefully look at that. Uh, but where you have large companies that have to get into databases for customer uh even just to get a customer premise, if you've got a technician that going out somewhere, you've got to segment your your systems out. So I, I think that I think that business is adapting themselves, and we're going to see where we will employ lots of computer science people for a long period of time of data, holding data, transmitting that that data, and holding it in storage. We have U.S. Representative Pete Sessions with us here on Deconstructing Dallas. Now, when we came into your office, I saw a number of pictures uh, with you and the Boy Scouts on the walls. And I know last summer when my son was on his way to Jamboree, uh, they stopped by your office in D.C. and spent some time and took some pictures. So can you talk about your relationship with the Boy Scouts and kind of um, how, how that uh, your relationship with them has evolved over the years? Yes, I can. And, th- and thank you. Uh, the Boy Scouts of America is an important institution to uh, the country. It's it's woven into the fabric of, of, of organizations, of people, of communities, of ideas about not only discipline and character, but also about uh, strategy and opportunity to challenge young, young people, in this case young men how to better their lives, how to, how to have a, a relationship not only with themselves that is, that is a demand upon a person, uh, as, as you have probably heard, uh, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country. That is a note that I took on myself. Mostly, you pledge yourself to an organization. It's a character-disciplined organization. I'm close to the Boy Scouts. My dad's an Eagle Scout. My grandfather wrote the God and Country Award. I'm an Eagle Scout. My two sons are Eagle Scouts. We believe in it. My best friends are Eagle Scouts. Scouting is under attack, has been under attack from when I was a scoutmaster in New Jersey in 1986. There had been attack uh, uh, in California, in New Jersey, in New York, and lots of these states that want to do a number of things to scouting, but what they want to do is defeat scouting. And they're trying everything they can do to take away and diminish where there is a, a relationship with a higher being. You can call that God, but it is a requirement that in Boy Scouting that you believe also uh, and, and honor God. And and there's a lot of people that don't like that. So a lot of people trying to defeat it, they're defeating it. it and, and I think they're being very successful right now to make put, put, to put the, United, the Boy Scouts on the, the defensive. And we're countering this sometimes well and sometimes not well. Uh, I believe in the Boy Scouts of America. I deeply believe in the Girl Scouts of America. I believe that girls and women should be allowed to be in their own organizations. I believe men and boys should be able to be in their own organizations as long as they're aiming to the very best as long as it's a character development and training and, and, and doing those things. And I think the vast number of Americans do. I think the Boy Scouts has a great name. I think we're under attack in courts and by laws and by people who simply cannot handle a, the truth that we believe that character counts and so they're defeating us at, at a core for who we are. Well, speaking of character development, I know you all just had your kickoff for the Pete Sessions Leadership and Growth Program, so I know it's something that you are passionate about. Tell us about the program this year, and, and I know you had uh, Rob Sarver as the keynote for the kickoff party. Can you give us a little insight on we that? We did, and I'll tell you, Rob Sarver, uh, as some people in, in our community know, that we have a, a a pretty good number of Navy SEALs who have chosen to make Dallas home. I don't want to call them retired. I don't want to call them <laughs> former. I want to call right. them Navy SEALs. They earned that title. They carry the trident uh, on their not only lapel, but they fought for this country. They did unspeakable things. Many of them hurt a high number of them hurt, uh, disabled. Uh, there's a young man uh, who was on our staff, a Navy SEAL who's running down in the second congressional district yeah. of Texas right now. Dan Crenshaw lost an eye 
uh, in uh, a, 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 an incident that happened where as the part of his official duties as a SEAL, it was tough. Uh, Rob Sarver challenged our young people in what we call PSLGP to uh, accept a code of honor, of disciplined boy, girl, young kid, boy.